Okay, yeah, I'll just leave that for the moment and get KDE working. So start X. And I'll just jiggle these windows about again. First video. Right, let's get Firefox running in this one. Uh, not that one. that one and then resize this again Okay, so I'll become root and we can start reading what we need to do to install Plasma. So there's two versions of Plasma at the moment, version 5, version 6. Version 6 is still testing for AMD64 and ARM64 and RISC-V. So we'll be installing the version 5 and it says that the current version is the last version 5 that will be installed or will be released rather um, yeah as the last KD Frameworks 5 based release remains unstable until the new generation desktop environment can be offered for, to most or all arches as an upgrade so it does mean that version 6 will be made stable um, probably very soon so to get Plasma installed, we just type this command in here. Let's do a minus V. And straight away, we've got some changes that need to be made to the um, package.use file. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. So first one is we need to add in KDE Plasma KWIN lock. And what I tend to do with these is do them one at a time in case it changes the results after the one that I do. So always do the one first one first. Um, should have done the package. Use there we go. So I'll put that one in first and it may change the output. That other one that came up may disappear or others may appear in its place. In this case it hasn't, so it's, but it's not a problem. So I'll just do no there. Edit again. And uh, what was that one called? App text. So let's rerun the command, and it now says that the following. Oh, actually, those other ones, I should check, they might be... No, I don't think they're global, so that's all right. But this one here does look like it's global. Um, so if I look for Gen 2 Use Index... Uh, Alsa, yeah, it was a global one, so it's saying if I've got UDEV specified, which it is, as you can see, it's in red, 
then Alison must also be specified. So I need to now edit the uh, portage make.conf and add in Alsa to the list. That should be there. ALS A. And rerun that. Okay, we've got a load more additions to make now. Um, so next we've got QT Core needs ICU. Well, ICU again, I know is a global, but let's check it. So there it is there. So I'm going to add that one in first. ICU. And it's, it, it's a lot better. You retain much more control if you do one thing at a time rather than just lumping everything in because there is a chance that you could cause other problems. Or as I say, the the way the system is at the moment, it may be causing other issues to appear that aren't really issues. They're just because something else hasn't been resolved first. So it is always better to take your time and do a little bit at a time. Uh, so that's that one. Let's rerun this, see what the next one is that comes up. So next it needs QML for KConfig. Now I don't think QML, though it appears for a lot of these QT packages, I don't think it's a global one. Um, so Q, no it's not. So let's start adding these in. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these don't have any relationship to others so you could like put all the QMLs in all at once but I will do uh, add them in one at a time so we want to edit the package.use this time because they're local use flags and it's KDE frameworks KDE frameworks so it belongs here We run the install command, the merge command, and the next one we've got is VLC needs OG. Well, OG is a global, again, I just know this from years of use, um, but if you're unsure, always check to see if it is a global variable first, because it's probably best that you add it in and get, you know, let other packages take advantage of the function. So yes, og is a global variable, so that will be going in make.conf. And add in og. So the next one is again KDE Frameworks and it wants a QML use flag. So back to the package.use. Um, that was KDE, I didn't see which package that was. Kite models. So that will go after that. Rerun the emerge command. And we've got cups. Again, cups I know is a global flag, but it's always worth checking. So, yep, there it is. Add support for the common Unix pr printing system. And if you have any reason that you don't want it installed globally, it's, it's quite all right to install it as a local flag in package.use. Or if there's a particular package you don't want that flag for, uh, use use flag for but you want it for everything else then stick it in make.conf to make it global and then in package.use just put in minus cups or whatever and the minus sign indicates you want it disabled for that package so this is dev qt qt print dev qt qt print and this is what we're doing now. Cups, right, okay, so it's the global one. Okay, 
Gooey. So now we've got Qt Gooey needs EGL, JPEG and accessibility. Now JPEG I know is a global, I think accessibility is global and EGL I think is a local. So let's check each one of them. EGL, well let's start accessibility. Yeah, see that's a global flag. EGL. EGL, okay, that is a global flag as well. And JPEG. Is a global flag as well. So let's add all three of them. Um, I'll copy accessibility to make sure I don't misspell it. Lightly case with two C's and two S's. Uh, so make.conf. So I need to add in EGL. JPEG and uh, accessibility, wasn't it? So that should go there. Right, we're getting the list down now, so um, Let's see what else we've we got here. Okay. So next one we want is BRL TTY requires Python to be specified. Now Python is a global variable. And it's down there. So let's add that in. Save that. And we try. So the next one got is KD Frameworks QML. Uh, sorry, this is the wrong one. It should be package of use. And let's retry it. So next we've got KD Frameworks Sonnet also needs QML. And hopefully this is the last one. Mesa needs Waylands. Well I think Waylands a global variable. <clears throat> Let's check. Yep, there it is there. So I'll put that in and let anything else is using Wayland. And another thing about the global variables is if you put it in for one package, it tends to be a dependency uh, link with other packages. So it means other packages require, for example, Wayland. So um, by putting globally, you're, you are satisfying anything like that where there's a chain of dependencies requiring the same use flag. Uh, so we want make.conf. And we'll stick in Wayland. Right, so what's happened here?
looks like it's trying to merge several different versions of Qt components. Enabling new use and update, right. Okay, so yeah, what the problem is, because we've made all these changes, the system's now got flags against it, but they haven't been resolved because the system needs updating. So what we need to do is to do that update first and then retry this um, right, I've got the American keyboard in here, which is a bit unfortunate at the moment, but so if we do this change update yeah you can see there's loads coming in now because we've made lots of global changes uh, mainly it's python but there's the odd one there there's an icu a wayland another icu so they're all being rebuilt and some other packages are being brought in for example cups uh, you see firefox is going to be rebuilt for wayland vim is going to be rebuilt for wayland and so on so we'll do the updates first and then come back and retry to uh, retry the KDE emerge command and I'm pretty certain it will work without any of those errors because the packages, there won't be any conflicts because the packages that are existing will have those capabilities. Okay, so those have been updated. We've got another news item, some messages there as well. So let's just check these. Okay, so we've set VA API, but it says since video cards hasn't got certain entries, it actually ignores that use flag. Um, this is just for Mesa though, so it's not a problem. Um, so for cups, it's saying to enable us setting the kernel to enable USB printers, um, but I won't be using USB printer, I haven't got one, so that's not a problem. An optional command to be added there by the looks of it. Yeah, to install events, um, that is quite a useful PDF viewer to have, um, it can be. Uh, there's an extra one that is different to the one that comes with KDE, which is called Ocular. So if you find something doesn't view maybe correctly one or the other, you can try a different one. Um, so yeah, it's just the news. Okay, it's just about a change again, which is what most of these news, news items are. So I'll just read that to get rid of it. Mark it as red, and then as it suggested there, do that clean as always in case anything's got outdated. And certainly, we have got some stuff here. Uh, let's just check. Oh, it's because I installed U disks and that still hasn't been picked up yet. I'd expect that to be picked up as a dependency requirement after we've installed Plasma. So, I'm not going to actually do anything with that. Oh, I suppose I could do actually. Um, so it will be picked up, it'll just be recompiled again and it'll ensure that the current set of libraries and packages are valid by having everything clean before we install KDE. Okay, so now let's recall the command to emerge plasma. And we've got one issue now. So lib Louis is masked by the squiggle, the tilde AMD 64 keyword. So it's basically saying that it's Um, an unstable package, the version it wants to bring in, by the looks of it. Uh, 
So it looks like the Braille. Required by Orca. Required by Meta. So let's do an e-query use for Orca. And yeah, it's got a Braille flag there. So that's what's bringing in this Lib Louis or Lib Lewis. So what I might do rather than bring in um, an unstable library that I probably won't need um, things is to do with Braille support. Um, I'm actually going to mask that out for this package. So I'll take this package name, edit package dot use app accessibility, paste that in there and put in minus braille. To, so that will be set. See at the moment it's by default installed or, or is already installed. Um, without that use flag, but because of what the uh, emerges that we've requested, it's going to set that flag. But because I've now just changed package.use to force it disabled, to hard disable it, it should mean that, well, in fact, if I do that eQuery again, you'll see it's not being uh, brought in. So I'm hoping that will mean that liblui or liblouis won't be brought in. Or won't be required and certainly there it is it's been uh, everything's been resolved now so you can see this is going to be quite a big build there's 300 packages uh, one's actually going to be downgraded for some reason it's obviously because some other package hasn't been brought up to date to work with that package it's going to be downgraded and there's two gigabytes of data that are required to be downloaded but as you might have noticed, the downloads happen in the background while building is taking place, so it's not like you have to wait for all the downloads to occur. Okay, yes, it's F FFmpeg4. That's still not been complete, that upgrade. So we've currently got this version here, version 6.1.1. .1. And for some reason, it's probably one of the media players or one of the multimedia libraries requires the use of FFmpeg4. And it's probably not aware that FFmpeg 6 is available. Um, there's a spelling package there that's making use of the EN setting. We put in an LI, uh, L10N. And as you can see, there's no EN underscore GB. So that's why it's useful to have a backup language. Um, the rest of it looks like a lot of Perl packages. So they're quite tiny, so they shouldn't take too long. The bulk of the build will, will be the... Qt libraries, the KDE frameworks, and um, all this Plasma stuff here. So it's probably going to take several hours, I would imagine. So let's start that going. There is a chance it could fail during the build, uh, maybe because some libraries need to be reloaded or um, some such thing occasionally happens, but not very often, in which case just a rerun of the update command or the uh, emerge command rather will generally fix that but I wouldn't expect this to break for any reason so we'll wait that for that to complete now okay so that's all finished a few, a few messages to read but generally not really that important with uh, KDE um, but there's other ones here so there's some fonts to Add to the system with eSelect. They're generally quite useful fonts to have. Uh, the Deja Vu ones, same with the Noto ones. Possibly that one. So it's 20, 75, 66 and 75. So if I enable um, 35, 36, 37, the no toe, 44, 45, 46, and this one here is 75, so it's number 50. 
So that's done. Um, so let's set that in the kernel. Let's double check that one. Switch row. This needs to be updated to the startup script. It's the same with the next one. So I'll paste that in. And same with power profiles. So there's an extra package to do with Microsoft Excel file indexing. LM sensors, that can be quite useful to do. There's a wiki page about adding that in to get information um, about the hardware on the system. Uh, like I said, a lot of these KDE ones are just information or extra packages to install for X functionality so you'll have to decide yourself if you're doing this if you want that functionality or not I tend not to install a lot of it but some of it can be useful um, it's just e select news read to look at so one's pipe wire again these are changes and y plumber so as before I'm just going to read these because they're not particularly interesting on a new um, installation they're only really important if you're upgrading so that should be plasma installed uh, it says that SDDM is preferred option we've already merged it uh, if you want to use light DM you need to set the minus SDDM flag for plasma meta so e query you plasma Meta, let's just check to see what we've got by default is set by the looks of it. If you want to start the KDE manually, so no display manager, you haven't installed SDDM or like DM or any of the others, then this is how you would start Plasma. Um, and there's some useful add-ons to be um, installed so what I'm going to do I think is come out of this to control Q save that and log out of this and this one and reboot and see if I get the option to start KDE in the login and also if it actually works. And even out of interest, if TWM now appears, uh, as I say, there may be some manual configuration to get that to work. As you see, it's not important because we can start it manually. So the display manager is loading. There it is there. Let's see what sessions we've got. So yeah, we've got Plasma there and Wayland. Let's try the X11. And there's Plasma loading. And there's a nice little welcome screen, screen so that loaded nicely and quickly. Um, looks like we've got the GB setting already, so that's good. Um, let's load up Firefox. You see it's already added that to the menuing and load up a prompt as well so console oh, right okay so it's not there at the moment so that could be the next bit to install so i'm going to load up xterm because that's what we've been using and there it is this time we get the extra options um, that are available in the 
the KDE environment, which is the minimize, maximize, and the close button, etc., and icons and so on. So it's a little bit nicer. 